was my special request for today. I love that song, There Is a Season. And as we look at our wonderful topic this morning, the golden rule, do unto others as you would have them do unto you, we acknowledge that there's a power and a presence in the universe greater than we are, and we can use it, and we are using it every single day of our lives. So when we remember that Jesus, as his humanness, what? As his humanness gave way to his divinity, the Christ consciousness arose triumphant and victorious. And that as his humanness gave way, he acknowledged, finally, be of good cheer. I have overcome. I have overcome the world of conditions. I've overcome the world of effects. I've overcome the world of these appearances, these judgments, these Pharisees and scribes that keep judging me and, and challenging me and think that I'm doing the work of the devil, that I'm demon-possessed because I am divine. I and my Father are one. He came to that realization. And when he said, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. What we really acknowledge is that every great religion, whether it's the Muslim religion, whether it's Buddhism, whether it's Judaism, every single religion, if you've studied the world's great religions, have a golden rule where we give out, what we give out comes back. So I want to treat you with unconditional positive regard for our oneness. And do I always agree with what others do? No. However, we can agree to disagree without giving our power away and judging outside of ourselves. It's so wonderful that our Dr. Clayton Beaver is here this morning because I invited him uh, to go to Africa with me, and I was going every single year for 10 years. And we were going to Nigeria, to Madonna. On a university. And what was so interesting is that I, on my bucket list, I always wanted to speak uh, at Oxford, England, and also in Cambridge. And I was invited to St. Catharines in Oxford. And I was giving a presentation on world peace. And after my presentation, and I want you to know that uh, I felt a little intimidated because all of academia was there. And, uh, you know, I got, yes, a doctor of divinity and in psychology, but, you know, it, it, <laughs> when you're sitting in the presence of such energy, uh, it, I felt a little intimidated. And then I remembered what John Powell, the Jesuit priest, said that when he was very nervous about giving a presentation, that he heard the voice of God say, just love them. <laughs> just love them. And I thought, just love them. And I got up and gave my presentation. And I received a standing ovation. I was just like so amazed. And I sat down. My daughter was with me. She said, you killed, Mom. You killed you know, this is, you know, this is their generation, right? And uh, I spoke from my heart. I spoke from my, the very sinews of my being about world peace and having been raised in domestic violence and the drawing the larger circle to include what everyone goes through. And uh, to finally have compassion for my father. 
that was a huge, huge step for me. So when I gave this presentation, the chancellor of Madonna University in Nigeria came to me and he said, we have the same message. And I said, wonderful, I'm so glad. <laughs> he said, will you come to Africa? I said, I'd love to. He said, yes. And I said, when? And he said, in two months. And I said, oh, oh my gosh. Well, I'll just work a few things out and I'll get over to Nigeria <laughs> in two months. And while we, you know, we went a few times and I invited Dr. Clayton to go with me a couple of times. And on the uh, one trip, we invited someone who was very big in the New Age uh, movement, very big in the Law of Attraction. And of course, Ernest Holmes wrote the Science of Mind textbook in 1926 with the Law of Attraction as one of, you know, the chapters in the Law of Correspondence, right? The Law of Giving and Receiving. And uh, we had a, a certain personage with us, and I liked her very much, and I invited her to go because she was very big in media and uh, getting the message out there and seemed very enthused about going to Africa. And But she said she could not go unless, you know, she was paid for the 10 days. And so I spoke to the powers that be because I was part, uh, in fact, I was the president of the International Foundation for World Peace. So I went to our treasurer and said, can we give her the $3,000 that she's requesting because this, you know, this is her, the, she makes a living in this way. And uh, they worked it out. And then uh, after this amazing conference of being with 25,000 students and faculty and the energy of that love and that you go to these foreign countries and we give our universal message of love and peace and to acknowledge our oneness beyond color, race, creed, sexual orientation, and political affiliation, that we are all one. And this is a Catholic university, obviously, Madonna University. No, not the singer, as someone asked me. No, this is a university uh, founded by the Reverend Dr. Emmanuel Ida, and an amazing personage. And he founded two universities and a polytechnic college and five manufacturing companies where the unemployed were suddenly gainfully employed. Every Wednesday he had this amazing, uh, the food that he would give to those that were in his uh, uh, complex, which was just miles and miles and miles. It was huge. And so after uh, the conference, uh, this person that I invited had never been to Europe and I wanted to just, you know, this. I want you to know, Nigeria is intense. You walk outside and suddenly you are absolutely soaked. <laughs> the humidity is so amazing. And when that humidity hits you, you know, you just like go with it and thank God they had fans. And, uh, you know, you find yourself standing in front of the fan. And so afterward, I wanted to go to Heidelberg because I had never been to Heidelberg. I've been to many places in Germany. Hamburg and Essen and, you know, uh, Berlin, but never to Heidelberg, which everyone said was like a little fairy village and had the castle and, you know, that I really wanted to just like thaw out in Heidelberg. And so I said uh, to this person that I invited, uh, would you like to go? And she wanted to go. And that was great. And I said, you know, out of the funds that you were given, uh, you can, you know, we'll spend the week. And it's really very reasonable. And it was amazing. Uh, in my hotel room, I would look out the window and the whole tree would be filled with parrots. Now this is in Heidelberg, Germany. Parrots, tropical parrots that were every color. And um, so I, at you know, the end of the week, I received her bill. She didn't pay her bill with the fund she received. So I went ahead and generously paid it. And uh, after we got home, and it was really interesting, we had this ongoing discussion. This was someone who was teaching and really uh, a proponent of the law of attraction. What we put out comes back. And one of the things that she said constantly when something would happen was, unbelievable. And I would say, why are you making a declaration to the universe that it's unbelievable when this is what you're asking for? And when we put these kinds of declarations out, they do return to us as within, so without. And she goes, well, the universe knows what I mean. I mean that it's really great. 
I said, but the universe doesn't really decipher in that way. It only receives what we put into it. You know, it, it, it does not have a rational mind. It as within, so without. So we had like this ongoing discussion. And when I uh, got home, I talked about it from the pulpit that, you know, the subconscious mind doesn't know a real experience from an imagined one. Let's get that. The subconscious mind does not know a real experience from an imagined one. So someone can go under hypnosis and they can take a pencil and say, this is a lighted match. And interestingly enough, what happens? A blister appears on the arm because the subconscious mind is receiving it as a lighted match. So we're very aware of that. So when Mary Baker Eddy said, stand porter at the gate of your conscious mind, allowing only those thoughts in that are going to forward and advance yourself, others, and ultimately the planet. Stand porter at the gate of your conscious mind. And that doesn't mean to like monitor every little thought. It means just to acknowledge that we are growing and evolving in amazing ways. And as we grow and evolve in amazing ways, we open a space and that space is called evolution, where we go to the next level. So uh, uh, she didn't like it that I mentioned it from the pulpit. Now, if you are a proponent of something and you believe strongly in it, you don't care who mentions it, from the rooftops, from the pulpit, wherever, right? So she received this amazing gift of, of this 10 days in Africa and a week in Heidelberg, and I never heard from her again. I wrote to her, you know, I thought we were friends. And we can ad agree to disagree, but I have been teaching this now, really for 50 years, because before I was in the ministry, I was teaching. So I was just, you know, a little hurt and stunned, and then let it go. And I want you to know when we say, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. The universe got it, that with my pure heart I had given. And so when Dr. Natarajan invited me to India, and he'd been inviting me every year for 15 years, every major event in Europe that I went to, Dr. Natarajan was there. He says, when are you coming to India? When are you coming to India? And I go, oh, well, it'll be soon. It'll be soon. And finally, you know, I said, I'm coming this time, I promise. So he sent me the ticket, and uh, I was uh, given this beautiful hotel room, and the chauffeur came to pick me up, and I gave my presentation, and we planted a couple of trees as part of the presentation for the Pongo Festival of Cultural Arts in, uh, in uh, India. And this, this is southern India, uh, Tamil Nadu. So uh, then he had his chauffeur take me all over southern India, this is for a couple of weeks. His name was Mr. Pandy. He became like a son to me. He called me Mama. He was just darling. And we went everywhere, every major temple. We went to the one that you have to take a boat out to the temple in the sea and where you can see the sun rising and the, the moon setting. You know, it was just every thousands of people gather for this. Every I would met parliamentarians. He had set up this agenda for me and the chauffeur, uh, we would get there, and then he would send his chef and his housekeepers for all his residences, and he had several. And this has been my friend for 15 years, and I thought he was, you know, a medical doctor, and I set, saw his picture all over India, you know, with the president of India, and I asked uh, one of his colleagues, what is it that Dr. Nader Ashen actually does? He's been my friend for 15 years, he's so humble, and I see these pictures of him and on billboards all over India. He says, oh, he's one of the main advisors to the president of India. Now, this man was very, very humble, very loving, and yet he had me chauffeured all over southern India to every major temple. I sat with the parliamentarians in their homes. They served the meal on a banana leaf. I mean, the food was all vegetarian. I am a vegetarian. I received the gift from the animal. I just don't eat the animal. And they respected that. And then uh, he had me flown to Delhi to spend the day at the Taj Mahal. So I had to leave Mr. Pandey. He goes, oh, he goes, Mama, I'm going to miss you so much. And we hugged, and I thought, I'm going to miss you so much because you spend two weeks with someone. And some of the trips were like eight and nine hours to get to the top of this incredible 
glacier in India where there was a Tibetan community and there was a great big billboard and with the Dalai Lama and saying that the Dalai Lama thanks uh, India for the amnesty that was granted to he and his people. And everything was magical. And they would not let me buy one thing. And I wanted to buy, you know, jewelry and gifts. And Oh, no, uh, I am instructed to get everything uh, for you. I said, but I want this ruby necklace. That's my birthstone. Oh, no, we are instructed to get everything for you. So I had this amazing trip. And fi the final day, I was driven to Jaipur up to the amazing uh, pink castle to ride elephants. And I was sharing with Kay that I asked permission of the elephant. And I whispered in the elephant's ear, uh, do you mind uh, taking me you know, on your back up to the castle? And on a real energetic level, the elephant said at one time, I was the one riding the elephant. And so I am happy to perform the service for you. And so I felt this energy and I got on the elephant and had this amazing ride up to the castle and felt this oneness with the elephant. It was so, it's such a spiritual moment. And then, uh, you know, came home, he, when I got back, they gave me this book of my adventures because one of his companies was a publishing company, so I received this amazing book of all of my adventures and speaking there in uh, Tamil Nadu. Was, and they, you know, sent me off in just grace and beauty and just the most amazing energy. And I thought to myself on the way home that I had extended myself to this person teaching the law of attraction uh, who never spoke to me again, who received all these amazing gifts. And I did it in the purity of my heart. And then I go to India and it's not only given to me, it's given to me ten Bold. All the things that was given to this person in love and the purity of heart were given to me in India. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. So with the purity of heart when we give out, yes, it's disappointing when people get into their stuff and they form a position. And, and the truth is, if something great happens to you, say, how fabulous, this is amazing. Not, it's unbelievable, because the universe says, oh yes, it's unbelievable. Gone. Because it's unbelievable. I don't have room in my consciousness to receive it. It's unbelievable. It's believable. And what did Jesus say? It's done unto you as you believe in your heart. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And if someone is not kind, we send kindness. If you remember, you have a choice of being right or being kind, choose kindness and you will always be right. And with this knowledge, this sacred knowledge, that we allow ourselves to feel that energy of oneness. And when someone acts in a way unbefitting of their true spiritual stature, we draw the larger circle. He drew a circle that shut me out. But love and I had the wit to win. We drew a circle that took him in. And when we draw that larger circle, we expand, we grow, we get the gifts of the universe. We get out of one African chancellor coming to me at St. Catharines at Oxford, England. I became the president of the International Foundation for World Peace. I went all over the world presenting on world peace. I became part of the Nobel Peace Prize Commission nominating commission. I was in Oslo quite a bit, met my beautiful friend, Christina Danielson, yoga teacher who we would meet for lunch when I was in Oslo. Wherever I go in the world, I meet my Facebook friends. So if you are viewing our presentation this morning, I know that we will meet. And that as we meet face to face, not through a glass darkly, but face to face to the truth of our being, that there is something so powerful. It's not a first time meeting. It's a joyful reunion of souls who have been together many, many lifetimes. So I want you to know that I love you and with profound esteem, I acknowledge our journey and where we're going. And where is that? Higher yet. Where is it? Higher yet. 
Where is it? Higher yet. Because I am in a high place and I will not come down. None of these outer things move me. I am in a high place and I will not come down. I say to you, namaste, the God in me salutes the God in you, and the God in you salutes the God in me. And if I'm in that place in me, and you are in that place in you, there is only one of us, namaste. I say, shalom, the peace that passes all understanding. And God bless us, every one. And so it is. Thank you so much. Know that I love you. I'm grateful for you. And we are going higher yet.